Hi everyone, this is Jim. Uh, I thought I would do something different in this video and talk about uh, installing and using a uh, Go Games database. So, well, to give you an idea of what you can do with a Go Games database, let's start out with uh, this one that I have installed here. It's got 40,000 games. This was free, by the way. And um, the most recent game here was played in uh, 2017. Let's see, this was played in the 73rd Honinbo in the preliminary B round. Um, so anyway, you can go through these games. There's this huge list of games you can check out. And um, it goes back, if you're interested in the history, it goes back to, uh, let's see, yeah. So the, there's zeros at the bottom of the database. Those are games that were entered without a date, I guess. Let's go up one notch. And, uh, but you can see there's these old games from the 1600s. Um, and going back still further, yeah, there's some Chinese games, just a couple of them uh, from like there's this game from uh, 1094 and this one from 1253. And uh, you'll notice that they start out, these games start out with the uh, stones already placed on the board, which is how they used to play in China. And then the first Japanese game is from 1561 and that starts out with uh, with a blank board and the, the players place the stones. Anyway, uh, let's see, I will come back and show uh, what else you can do with that. But uh, I wanted to, uh, first of all, talk about how you can download that. So the program I'm using is uh, a free and open source program called uh, Com Combilo. There was instructions on how to pronounce it, <laughs> Combilo. Um, I guess it's from uh, Esperanto for comb to combing through the database. And um, they have versions for um, Linux, Mac OS X, and Windows. I think it was developed on Linux, actually. And the most recent the Windows version is uh, 0 0.8.4. So that's the version I'm using. I was just able to download this and install it, and there was no problem. And then right at the top of this page, and I'll have, um, I'll, I'll have the links to these uh, pages in the description. At the top of this page, there's a mention of um, the game databases that are available. And you click on this link here, and it shows the different game collections. And probably the best collection is this one, the Games of Go on Disc, which um, it was only 10 or $15 here. Let's click and go there. That's a, a commercial product is what I wanted to point out. Um, and here we can see, yeah, there's, there's a download available and... Um, Let's see, yeah, $15 US by PayPal. So um, not very expensive. Uh, but there was a free one, uh, Andre Bauer's game collection. So I, I downloaded the free one first to, uh, to find out about it. And, uh, and that was quite, uh, you know, quite an extensive collection. So I'm gonna be happy going through that for a while. These are just the raw games, they're not annotated. So you don't get uh, the descriptions, but we will, uh, come back to that point later. So I think, you know, the other database might have more, uh, well, it has more games and it might also have more uh, information about the games. Um, but this one um, does have a lot of current games in it um, that it keeps up to date. You may not be able to read the, the tiny print, but it has a Honinbo collection, a Meijin collection. Those are Oza collection, Tengen collection. Those are major uh, Japanese tournaments. And um, that, and it's a, an archive that you have to download. I downloaded the uh, 7-zip archive. So I wanted to point out before I could actually read that, I actually had to download 7-zip uh, and install it. And 7-zip is another open source uh, free game. <laughs> Not game. An open source free software package um, with uh, either 32 or 64-bit uh, versions of Windows. So... Um, Pretty cool, you can get all this stuff for free. So the procedure was, um, I first of all, let's go back here. So step one was I um, unloaded, I downloaded um, Combilo and installed it. Step two was I went to the game collections, to Andre Brower's game collection, and I downloaded this seven zip archive, which was 12 megabytes long. Step three was I downloaded the uh, seven zip um, downloadable and uh, installed it. Okay, and then step four was to install it 
on my machine you know so the uh, all you do is unzip it you just choose a directory you want to unzip it to and then you uh, run the uh, combilo program and this part was uh let's go re let's reset this this part was a bit tricky this is where i had the most trouble actually <laughs> trying to figure out everything else went smoothly up to here but trying to figure out how to uh, actually install a database in this program was a little bit tricky um, but you click on database here and you, you select the first option which is edit database list edit db list and you click on that and then you click on this button here let's bring this down where you can see it edit database list you click on this button here that says add db and then that lets you browse and you go to that directory uh, where you installed the go games and you just select it and um, and then it'll come back and install um, one thing you should notice is that uh, it does automatically this comes up checked recursively add subdirectories so that database that I installed it has uh, you know lots of directories and subdirectories and it recommended that by default this option is turned on create one database per folder but when you start to install it it says this this uh, <laughs> this database has a lot of folders you should probably uncheck that so I did turn that off so you can save yourself a step by automatically turning off that option you do, don't really want to put a database in every folder you really just want one database at the top and then you uh, click on OK when you're done and it takes a long time it took about half an hour on my machine to do this whole database um, and there are various error messages there are some 9 by 9 games that uh, are uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it doesn't handle it there, but there were there were some complaints about the nine by nine games, and there were some complaints about some complaints about other games. So um, you know it wasn't entirely smooth. There were also errors in the uh, un unpacking or unzipping process. So um, anyway, don't worry about those error messages, I guess, because uh, you still get lots of games. Could be there were empty games or empty folders, or was complaining about things like that. But after you've done all that, then you have the uh, database up and running. And so um, let's talk about some of the features here. I, um, one thing I noticed right away is that it has um, statistics down here, which I think is kind of cool. Say you're, um, uh, say you're white and your opponent is black and he's played here. And you want to know, well, what's, what's the normal response here for white? You can hit this uh, search button and it will search for this pattern in the database and then if you have, click on the statistics tab if it's not already showing it will show all of the places where uh, pro players have played or well I can't say pro players all the places that have been played in this database and you look at the most popular spots you might expect the, the other four four point is very popular um, but there are these other options too um, the um, I guess you have to hit search again to get that back. Okay, um, you could also go to the um, the uh, four three point, and you know I was kind of wondering in this position is it better to play in this four three point or this four three point, and it looks like they're about equally popular. B, the this four three point is um, seven oh three, and C the symmetric four three point where you just have identical. Uh, setups is 640 games in the database so pretty equal but um, there's another feature here if you look click on B so we have this uh, setup and we go to date profile which is uh, how often how oh, did I do something no I think this is it yeah how often was this play this particular position on the board um, and what we see is this move that I just played over here this far three point was most popular in the 80s and 90s and it's been declining in popularity so if we go back a step and go back to the statistics tab search again ah so every now and then you'll see it's uh, it's not finding all the games it found before what you have to do is click on this button reset game list I think once it's done a search it kind of has refined the game list and it will only search within that game list so every now and then you have to reset the game list and click search again and it finds all the games from that position all over again so suppose you, you were interested in playing this move or you wanted to compare it to that one we saw it was equally popular but um, but it's uh, 
the dates at which it became popular are much more recent. So this is a this move here is has been more popular since about 2002. It looks like. So in recent years, uh, players are playing this move much more often, and uh, whereas in the 80s and 90s, uh, they were playing the other move and they weren't playing this move so much. So, you know, it's a, a way for you to track um, trends in opening, opening theory, I guess you could call it. And hey, let's go back. Let's uh, reset this and go back a step. And then... Um, then uh, this is the other position I was looking at. This is the kind of the standard reply, the 4-4 point, and black has got 1-4-4 uh, and 1-4-3. It's black's move. What are black's main moves here? So let's do a search. Click that uh, that that button there with the uh, hourglass that to do with the uh, magnifying glass to do a search each time. Um, so the most popular moves for um, black in this position are A. That's the uh, low Chinese opening. Let's back up. And B. This is the uh, introduction to the Kobayashi opening. So if you <laughs> want to know the difference between the low Chinese, well, first of all, you know, what's the main response for, um, for white to the uh, low Chinese opening? You can, you can search for that and uh, see that uh, there are lots of responses, but the top three or four. It looks like, yeah, looks like there's several responses that are in the same range, but A and B. Are, A is here, the approach to this stone, and B is here, the approach to this stone. Okay, so a couple of ideas for how to deal with the Chinese opening. Um, and you can, of course, follow this here. Let's go back. Let's uh, reset the gang list. Search. And now suppose um, you wanted to learn more about the Kobayashi opening. That starts with B and then do a search. The main response for white is A, the back off. And you can see that's quite quite significantly popular, 609 to 124, so that's overwhelming, the overwhelming choice in this database. Search again, and then the back off here, A, this completes the Kobayashi setup. And uh, But you can see that people have been playing other moves at this point, so people have been trying Going with B here looks like sort of a combination of the Kobayashi and the Low Chinese. Um, it's probably just called the Low Chinese at that point. Um, or playing at C, which is like the Kobayashi, but playing this move one stone closer. And so, but A is the standard Kobayashi. I just wanted to uh, put this on the board because it's not really, I was calling it the Kobayashi a little bit earlier. It's not really the Kobayashi until all these moves have been played and you have this particular setup. Um, and again, you can back up one move and uh, look at how this move has fared over time versus the other move and see how the popularity has changed. So all that is kind of interesting, I think. Um, and then one uh, last point I wanted to mention here is that Combilo has uh, got, in addition to the uh, ability to go through the database, it also has a record of these games. and. Um, and ones that have been commented. So this one, for example, you'll see them, them highlighted in green. They have this green highlight if there's a comment available uh, somewhere. So this game between AlphaGo and Lee Sadal was, has commentary in Go Game Guru. So you can go to this uh, website and find the commentary. And what's nice about, nice about Combilo, it doesn't have the commentaries themselves, it doesn't have the games themselves. What it has is it has um, a hash value computed from the game. So wherever that game came from, whatever database, it just compares it to the hash value and recognizes it. And it has a table of which games have commentaries. It finds it in that table and then highlights it over here. It says, oh, there's a commentary on this game. Now, a lot of these commentaries are... Let's see if we can find an example. Yeah, a lot of these commentaries are in Go World, which is uh, a magazine. I don't know if you will be able to find those commentaries online. But some of those commentaries, yeah, like that one, is is uh, online online at Go Game Guru. So interesting uh, way to uh, find some commented games and uh, play through them. And then you double click on a game if you just want to uh, play a game. You're not fooling around with the statistics anymore. You go back the beginning of the game and you can just play through it step by step and just see how this game was played out and that, that can be fun it's fun to go back and look at some of the old games here let's reset 
this reset button resets the game board and the uh, and also the game list. So we're back to the full database. You know, if you want to go back in time and look at how they uh, played back in uh, in the uh, the eleventh uh, century, <laughs> we have uh, we have examples of games from the Chinese era here. Oh, I guess I'm a little too slow there. Yeah, it's kind of slow scrolling through it, but um, there we go. Backing up this way, maybe. There we go. So that's that's this is the beginning. The oldest game in the database from uh, 1094. The four immortals meet in Chengdu. Okay, well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and, uh, well, have fun with this. See you later. Bye.